Long Country. This is Sunday Mass with Bishop Greg Homer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Let's give thanks to God for the gift of life and pray that in all things we will do with that life as he wants. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. You are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek and he will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. The word of the Lord. The response is, I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all, all the days, days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I know how to be poor, and I know how to be rich too. I have been through my initiation, and now I am ready for anything, anywhere. Full stomach or empty stomach, poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. All the same, it was good of you to share with me in my hardships. In return, my God will fulfill all your needs in Christ Jesus as lavishly as only God can. Glory to God our Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might see how great is the hope to which we are called. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call all those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to the, his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops destroyed those murderers and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town, invite anyone you can find to the wedding. So those servants went out onto the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. A long time ago, when I was at university, I had a number of uni friends that studied similar courses to the courses that I took. And two of them were Greek. And back in those days, we were interested in each other's religion. So they would come to some Catholic masses. And I, with some other Catholic friends, would go with them to Greek Orthodox masses or Greek Orthodox liturgies, which were very long, but also very beautiful. And it gave rise to <clears throat> a very real discussion of what we had in common and where the differences were. Perhaps that's why in the end I went off to become a Carmelite, I don't know. But one of the sayings that I remember them giving as Greeks was this, I've got a farm, I've got a business. And in the Greek saying that was always an excuse not to do something which you should do, coming straight from St. Matthew's Gospel. As these people said, I won't come to the wedding, I've got a farm, I have to go to my farm, I have to attend to my business. And a very common one, I've got a farm amongst the Greeks means I've got something else that I have to do which is more important. In today's gospel we have this marvellous story about the King, God our Father, inviting people to the banquet of heaven. The first part of the story is very sad because the first people that are asked have got other things that they want to do. They've got other things which seem more important. It's something which we understand very well 
because so often when we are called to something higher, something more godly, something more holy, there are the concerns of ordinary life which weigh us down. I've got a farm. I've got this that I have to go to. I've got a business, I'm making money. So I don't have time for these things. So we understand what Jesus means in this part. We say the same things. We give the same excuses so often. Fortunately for us, the Father hasn't sent an army to destroy our houses. Um, but rather, God is persistent. God comes back and asks again. So the story goes on. Well, if these people won't come, then go everywhere and ask anyone to come to heaven, the good and the bad alike. That's quite an astounding thing because we have generally presumed that those that come to heaven have to be good people. But the parable says the bad and the good alike because the wedding hall, heaven will be filled with guests. And while we make distinctions between what we want and don't want to do, God our Father says, I don't care, I just invite everybody to the wedding hall, the good and the bad alike. It's a wonderful thing for us to hear that because I don't know that any of us are so arrogant as to say, I'm good. I'm good, I'm bad. We've all got a bit of both. We've all got selfishness. We all have our own ways of doing things. In our own ways, we hurt people without realizing and sometimes realizing it, our life hurts somebody. So there's not one of us who can simply say, I'm good. We are all good and bad alike. And each of us is invited to heaven by our heavenly father. And it's in that confidence, in this, the confidence of this gospel parable that we are called to live. Listen to the voice of God inviting you because even though you might say no now, the voice will come back and invite you again. It will keep calling you so that please God on the last day, you will with all your heart say, yes, I'm coming to the wedding feast and our Lord will take you there. And let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As people called to the wedding banquet, let us bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That the church on earth may thrive and grow and draw many to the feast of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That rich and poor alike may not make excuses to evade the call of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through our apostolic efforts, we may provide the hungry with their share of God's bounty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be found worthy to come to the supper of the Lamb of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may live in the house of the Lord and rejoice in the banquet of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice under your hands. Praise and the glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God. Heaven, Heaven and, and earth, earth are, are full, full of, of your, your glory. Hosanna <coughs> in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim May your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord. <coughs> and resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof. roof. Don't only say, say the, the word, word my soul. soul.
and let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And my mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.